Welcome to the Friday edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 523. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conker. I'm Gavin Ashenden, and it's the 9th of August, 2019. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, clergy and laity, welcome to the program. You have a responsibility before we get started, and we prefer that you do this before you watch it. It's, it's just our preference. I'd like you to share the program with your friends, family, relatives, and clergy. I want you to comment on the program. We got um, just a tremendous traffic on the YouTube channel with all your comments on the last episode. We appreciate that. Like us. Please just Sally field us to death. If you could like us on Facebook and like us on YouTube, that'd be really wonderful. If you just periodically through the week, oh, Unscripted's out. I didn't know Unscripted's out. I was waiting for the next episode. I wish I could know right away when the next episode's coming out. There's a way to do that. You go to the YouTube channel and you click the subscribe button. And then there's a little bell that comes up. The bell is there for you. The bell tells you the instant the next episode comes out. Right now I'm clicking publish and people are getting that little bell on their screen. Oh, the new episode's out. And that's how that happens. I'm glad you guys watch. Gentlemen, um, we're going to discuss cathedral stuff. And that's why I have Gavin dressed in purple today. When we discuss cathedrals, I need a bishop. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, we've discussed for many years how the Church of England has gone bunkers how the Episcopal Church has gone bonkers. Here in America, the Roman Catholic Church has gone bonkers. And this whole show is made up of you watching us talk about the church that's broken. We're critics of the church. It's the way, uh, it's the way we roll. Uh, George, tell us a little bit about the helter-skelter story going on in the Church of England, and then we'll have Gavin just dig on in. Well, first, I think we need to have some vocabulary lessons. because Yes, what Gavin is helter-skelter? Helter Skelter is a refrain from a Beatles song that was taken up by the mass murderer Charles Manson. So a book was written about that. Helter Skelter was a movie, and it has a very sinister, nasty, nefarious uh, ring to it for an American. Gavin, what is a Helter Skelter in the UK? Uh, it's a fairground attraction. It's a little. It's a tower with a circular slide. You walk up the inside, uh, up some stairs. And then when you get to the top, there's a, an external slide that takes you all the way down to the ground. And it's been one of the most uh, popular fairground attractions for two or three hundred years in England. In well, fact, the, the, the term Helter Skelter was first coined in 1905 by a gentleman who went down it. He got in his little burlap bag and he goes, oh, that's just Helter Skelter. And I guess the name just uh, uh, kept on because in other places it's called the Canadian uh, Slide and other things. It's known by many names. You just watched a video I had on screen about how fun it really was. And, you know, if you've been on the Tower of Terror at Disneyland down in Florida, you're like, yeah, it's just a little ride. That's on Universal Studios, Gavin. I don't think it's in Disney. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm an expert of Florida attractions. Huh? <laughs> I think well, it's one, one on the end of Brighton Pier, and uh, it, it's right above the sea. And it's it's you know it's extremely exciting. If you don't have the opportunity of going to Disneyland or or uh, Thorpe Park, which is a huge place here, Alton Towers, um, some of these helter skelters are quite wonderful. And this one that they have in Norwich Cathedral, we're going to talk about. Uh, it's quite a venerable one. It's been around a long time, and it gets put up and taken down in various places. They're great fun. I love them. Well, so part George. of the deals of the Rochester Cathedral having a mini golf or miniature golf course set up in the nave, Norwich Cathedral uh, has installed this helter skelter inside the church, inside the uh, uh, inside the building. And uh, according to some of the news reports, the canon, uh, one of the canons at uh, Norwich Cathedral said he'd like people, he was so impressed by the Sistine uh, Chapel roof that if people could only see the roof of Norwich Cathedral, they too would be elevated to a closer relationship with the Lord. And what better way to do that than to have a little bit of Disney inside the Norwich Cathedral, put an amusement park right inside the cathedral. And what's an extraordinary 
is Gavin's not only dressed up for this show. How many times have you been on the TV or radio today, or been on within the press? Uh, I, I think I've had I've had two two BBC television interviews and about five major radio ones, hit, hitting the hitting the BBC Radio Four jackpot. So uh, for some astonishing reason, uh, the public, or rather the media, have taken to this story with delight. I got phoned up by the Daily Telegraph. Uh, I think. Yes, there must be a yesterday or the day before, uh, saying um, we were looking for uh, a, a sort of cross grumpy traditionalist to say that this is dreadful rubbish and an abomination, and we've come to you because we think you're the most subtle cross grumpy traditionalist there is. So would you put a bit of nuance in it? And I said yes. So you know, here here's a statement, and I nuanced it quite carefully, whereupon. They stripped all the nuance out of it and made me look like a really ranting, dribbling, cross uh, person. So I wrote my own um, my my own defense, theological defense of my critique, which I put on my website. And um, and then in for for reasons that I'm still trying to digest, and George I think has a better grasp on uh, the whole the whole the, the mainstream media in this country, radio and television have picked it up. And they run with it really quite seriously. Well, le you said uh, in the pre-show that there's a religious reporter from the Telegraph who took the ride, who climbed oh, up and said... B the BBC Religious Affairs Correspondent. Oh, sorry, yeah. BBC. He said, I'm going to go to the cathedral. I'm going to hop on the Helter Skelter, get closer to God, and see what the big hula is. And what was his response, Gavin? Well... <laughs> <laughs> one yes. of the things he usefully did, uh, one of the things he usefully did in the interview was to check out the Dean of Norwich's assertion that having a helter skeleton would lead to people to think about God. So he asked a very nice lady with her child, did you enjoy this? I loved it, she said. Did you think about God? No, not at all, she said. <laughs> so he then comes down the, the slide and uh, at the bottom he said, yes, I think Coral Evensong gets me closer to understanding the new testament but there are an awful lot of people in here queuing up to take the ride for the for me i feel more strongly about this point than gavin and perhaps it's because i have uh, some little more experience in news organizations but there's i see a, a sea change in that in the past if this had happened two three years ago they would have had gavin or someone a gavin like person on to be the stage buffoon. In other words, Gavin would, the, the Gavin-like person would splutter and bluster and say, this is heresy, this is terrible. And then you would have a calmed, reasoned person explaining why this is part of the modern with it Church of England looking to reach out to the world. That's the template that has always been used for these sort of things in my 25 years of doing this business. What I saw in the BBC reports and in, and in, in everyone that I've read so far is Gavin is not the buffoon. Gavin is painted by the press as the voice of sweet reason. It's the Dean of Norwich who's the buffoon. It's the Canon of Norwich who's a, a, a buffoon. And the way it's been, well, I'll give you an example. What's the buffoonery? Well, in um, the, they cite, uh, I don't know her name, the Dean of Norwich, Gavin, can you? A Canon Jane Hedges. Jane Hedges. Jane Hedges is quoted why she's doing this. Oh, it's great fun. Uh, it and it will open up cathedrals to people who think you only only those with posh voices can enter a cathedral. This will allow, basically the great unwashed masses who don't set in foot inside these places will rush in. At that point, they then switch to an uh, man in the street interviews of these uh, girls, all of whom are giggly schoolgirls with posh accents. Very posh. <laughs> Very posh accents. These are not working class people. These are not speaking estuary English. These are lovely little ladies from Rodine or the Cheltenham Ladies College who have a day off from school and they're being taken by Miss Smithers to see the fun. And it's so, in other words, the BBC set up the Dean of Norwich to look like an idiot by the placement of her comments, reality. Comments of the canon that, of oh, this is going to just attract people in droves who are going to find God in this. And as I haven't pointed out, have you found God? No, but it's great fun. It's a lot of fun. I like how the BBC reporters uh, 
asks the reporter who's in the field, well, this wouldn't happen in the Catholic Church. And he's Catholic. I'm Catholic. We, we would never have this in the Catholic Church. And she's like, no, we have rules. <laughs> It's her well, response. She said, she said, we have the real presence of Jesus. We would not behave so disrespectfully. And so uh, the Anglicans, in her view, do not have the, the real presence of Jesus and feel free to behave disrespectfully. But that's not just her view. That's the Anglican view, too. The thing uh, yeah. that makes the most cross, I think, um, I, was, I was invited by the Telegraph to use words like mockery, you know, is this mocking God and this, is this blasphemous? And I, I fell a little bit into the trap, but not, but not too far, I hope. The thing that really astounded me and took my breath away was the canon at Rochester they wheeled on uh, as an expert in these things. And he said, of course, we have no idea really how God touches people and brings him to them. Uh, and I said, actually, excuse me, uh, I, I've lectured in the psychology of living 25 years. We do have some very good ideas. George said the same thing. He quoted some American research. We know exactly what turns people off and what, what uh, things turn people on. Uh, and the idea that that uh, these cathedral officials really don't have any idea of how to reach out to the gospel in a way that uh, attracts and affects people and are thrashing around for populist devices to increase the footfall across the threshold of these buildings, though there is no evidence and there never has been that simply entering a cathedral produces a, a, a divine converting encounter. And we know that because tourists have been going into cathedrals for 300 years. We've been putting on musical concerts forever, art galleries and culture forever. And, and we never have people coming out saying, I met the risen Lord, I give him my life. <laughs> How is it they don't know this? I, at the risk of sounding uh, uh, self-important, but I do have some knowledge of how to grow a church. Uh, my church has grown by about 50% in the past five years, and the county, during that period, the county population has grown 6%. So that extra 44% is what we're doing in the parish. It's no mystery. It's no secret. There is scholarly research after scholarly research that tells you how to do this. And what it tells the three, according to the Barna, in Barna Group, which is a research group in the United States, the three worst methods of evangelism are street corner preaching, handing out tracts to strangers, and events. They never work. And in other words, they do surveys of people who are non-Christian or thinking about Christian or spiritual but not religious. None of those approaches work whatsoever. What works are interpersonal relational contacts. And, that, and for that, per, it's, I don't want to say it's easy, but conversion of non-Christians into the Episcopal Church, my God, it happens all the time because it's relational. It's not gimmick oriented. Uh, t uh, there's a, a, a refrain that uh, why I'm so exercised about this is Talleyrand uh, had, an, a, a, had a, a little bon mot that it was worse than a crime. It was a blunder. And this is it's this is not this is worse than heresy. This is a blunder. This is incompetent middle manager ignorant people who have been placed in positions of authority who have no clue professionally from a professional priest's point of view for someone who's run a parish who knows how to do it and who's been successful according to his professional uh, standing these people are rank idiots and amateurs I, I, had to give, I had to give some careful thought to how how i opened my remarks wary of being cast as the dr killjoy dinosaur which i have been cast as on twitter so far it's true uh well, and I'll, think, be, I'll be the self-righteous prig and you'll be the uh killed <laughs> and uh I, the, I i began with with george's critique exactly i said i the problem is these people are incompetent they've asked the wrong question and they've got the wrong answer to the wrong question you know the wrong question is how do we get people into church uh, and and the assumption and the wrong answer is if we entertain them they'll come into church but there's no sense, of course, that they'll then ask the uh, find some numinous encounter with with the living God. What, at the end of one of the interviews, the um, one one very sharp woman on Radio Four said, "Well, look, there's a crisis going on. Nobody under the age of forty identifies as a Christian in the Church of England. You know, th there's disaster coming down the tracks. What's your solution?" 
And I said, well, it's it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> but I said, you're absolutely right. This is this is the disaster, uh, and the and the problem might be solved if the Church of England decided instead of between the two choices it has it's chosen the wrong one instead of choosing to condone a progressive culture in a thoroughly atheistic and materialist society what it ought to be able to do is recovering its roots and speaking prophetically into that culture and if necessary against it at that point it might gain some traction but what it's doing now you're quite right uh, well, has no effect whatsoever for anybody well there is the, well, Kevin, I think this is a point you made in our pre-show. What is the most successful evangelism tool in the Anglican world, and where did it come from? Well, I would say in the Church of England, the most successful one is going to be the Alpha program. Uh, Trinity Holy Brampton has uh, Brampton, Brampton, whatever, has uh, certainly put together a way to get the young people, the middle class, the not middle class, all the different caste systems in England uh, into the church to hear about Jesus, to hear about interpersonal relationships, to, you know, grow the church. They have a successful program. This could certainly be used by this cathedral who wants to do Helter Skelter. And it's an interpersonal, relational program. It's not an event or a preachy where where we are giving we are showing and showering you with good works and giving you the benefit of looking up close to our ancient our ancient wood. Um there's no mystery or secrets about church growth. And this is just, well, they promote the wrong people in the Church of England, and this is the fruit of several generations of bad leadership choices, where you have people who actually, I think they actually believe this nonsense. Oh, they do, most, they really do believe it. Uh, but it's not just the wrong people, George, it's, it, it, it's, it's um, I was going to say bad theological education, but I don't think that's quite right. Um, they they've they've reached some very really impoverished theological conclusions. Their understanding of God, their understanding of who Jesus is, their understanding of the kingdom, uh, is so far away. I think from uh, from radical traditional Christianity, which takes evil seriously, believes in heaven and hell, knows that people have to be reborn and sh and must be saved. This is completely off their map. What they're doing is is spirituality. They're doing um, uh, ethical monotheistic theism. Is that what was that? What was the phrase? Um, there's a there's a Kevin. You'll you'll know the, the therapeutic one. deism. That's yeah, it. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. What, that's what they're doing. It's not. It, I, I don't mean to be priggish, but they're not doing Christianity. They're doing no. Uh, the transformational Trinity is is Christianity. You know, where every part of uh, the message is you can be transformed, not by yourself, not by your own works, uh, but by Christ in you. It's interesting to watch this because did we not just in our last episode or an episode ago talk about golf in the cathedral? I, I'm waiting for next week when we sit down and talk about the next event they plan. What, what could be worse than Helter Skelter? Well, there are plenty of things worse. Uh, we <laughs> think the think church. <laughs> uh, we have a, celebrated the occasional clown mass. <sighs> and uh, Gavin's opinion piece on this story, I decided to pour kerosene onto Gavin's fire and used a picture from a Trinity Wall Street clown mass where there's a man in a clown suit with makeup holding, a, holding above his head the, uh, the, the bread just after uh, he says, Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Yeah. And we've we've been there. We've done that. And I and, well, and we had, we had the U two Eucharist. Just yeah. go to St. Patrick's Cathedral, in New York City, next time they have liturgical dancing, yeah. and where they have uh, gay inspired homoerotic uh, uh, dances uh, to uh, what's his name, uh, Co uh, Cohen's Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, that you know this pretty much a plenty of idiocy to go around we don't the, the church of england has its fair share but we've got it too folks yeah you won't i won't be showing video of that uh on the show today i'm sorry <clears throat> we have a little decorum so i think we've hit this this all together pretty hard here any other uh, questions people have about the uh episode you may want to go to the youtube comments and uh certainly talk about it can, what I, you raise could another, can I raise is another there something figure? else 
Sure. Yes, I think I think is very important. Okay. I have discovered that we are a focus of that fascination for some Mormons who have mm -hmm. uh, who have uh, analyzed our theology, and they believe that we may be the uh, the leaven among the right. We may be righteous Gentiles uh, preparing the way for the world to uh, receive the new revelation. So, I just think that's so exciting that even. Uh, well, other Mormons hate us and we're heretics. But, that could uh, only be true if we had a relative of Brigham Young on the program, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, confession time. I am a direct descendant of Brigham Young. It, it's, you know, I don't tell that to many people. And I'm sure Brigham Young rolls in his grave every time he hears it. But yes, Kevin, uh, because of my mother's side of the family, she's an angel. And if you go all the way up, you're going to see my name, angel. not a theological. Yeah, <laughs> angel with two L's. Uh, Brigham Young married Mary Angel, and I think we go back, what, three or four, genera four, four or five generations, and I can call him great-great-great-grandpa. So, yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's my connection to the Mormon Church. Gentlemen, well, thank you. <laughs> What's that? No, that's it. <laughs> I have nothing so exotic. Two rabbis, on one, two rabbis from Germany in East Europe on one side in the 1700s and an Elizabethan pirate who singed the king of Bain, Spain's beard. So, nothing <laughs> as religiously my, charged my as you. has been in genteel decline for about 400 years. So <laughs> <laughs> you do it so elegantly, George. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the brave... Kevin brings the exotic spirituality. You you bring the class, and uh, I'm afraid I I may be the clown. Anyway, Jay, <laughs> who are we, and what have we been listening to? That's right. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm George Conger. I'm Gavin Ashton, and you've been listening to episode 523 of Anglican, fulminating and unscripted. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>